Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Kell Brook's excuse for losing to Errol Spence now rejected as Eddie Hearn says Kell Brook plans to go back down to welterweight. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We work in new media, gang gang. Thank you guys for the support, but I came across this interview with Eddie Hearn, Sky Sports. Shout out to them. Link will be in the description, so you also can go to the article yourself, but I'll show it. And Eddie Hearn was talking about Kell Brook's future. Title, Khan versus Vargas, Amir Khan, Kell Brook, and Manny Pacquiao all vying for a super fight, says Eddie Hearn, right? No big deal. Said Kell Brook would take another big name fight at welterweight. You know, so that's the, the caption read. So I'm like, OK, well, let me read this. It says Kell Brook could snatch a super fight with Manny Pacquiao away from Amir Khan after expressing a willingness to return to the welterweight division. Khan is back in action against Samuel Vargas this Saturday in Birmingham in the UK, live on Sky Sports, and is keen to line up a fight with WBA champion Manny Pacquiao. So Amir Khan is saying he wants a big fight with Pacquiao. And he's been saying this with Floyd or Pacquiao and it didn't happen. But Brooks' intention to rejoin the 147-pound division could complicate these plans, with promoter Eddie Hearn admitting it is, quote, wide open for any of the trio to be involved in a stadium fight in early December. Quote, this is the fight where we find out what Khan has left, Hearn told Sky Sports. But Amir Khan has a decision to make. If he beats Samuel Vargas, probably within two weeks, do you want Brook? He goes on to say, quote, Brook has said to me, I want a big fight basically he was going to have a run out at Wembley on the Anthony Joshua Alexander Povetkin bill but he was he was just like I want the big one I met with Pacquiao's people last week as well and if Amir Khan is too expensive for Pacquiao because Pacquiao is very expensive Pacquiao could fight Kell Brook Brook but Brook is going to have to be at 147 pounds to fight either of those two he has to start now the Sheffield man marked his super weight super welterweight debut with a ruthless second round stoppage <laughs> victory ruthless okay over sergey rabchanka in march but with a lengthy training camp ahead of him hearn is confident that brooke can comfortably fight again in a weight class where he held the ibf title setting up a potential showdown with khan or manny pacquiao quote he will make 147 pounds, said Eddie Hearn. I still think he's better at 154, but if he's got 16 weeks to do it, he'll be okay. He said, who am I fighting? I said, it doesn't matter. You may fight either of those guys, but you need to get into the gym now. Could Brooks steal the Pacquiao fight and Amir Khan is left with nothing? Is Brook about to gate crash the Pacquiao Khan fight? It's wide open for anybody to fight, end quote. So, um... You know, a ploy to see Amir Khan's fight with the pretense that Pacquiao might be into the equation for Amir Khan. So I'm not really interested in the Samuel Vargas fight. I don't know if it's going to be on DAZN or what, but it's just, you know, the Amir Khan should win. And if he doesn't, then that's a testament to where he's at in his career. Samuel Vargas got stopped by Danny Garcia and Errol Spence before that and had a loss before Errol Spence. So it doesn't really excite me. I'm going to New York to cover Danny Garcia versus Sean Porter. Obviously, the much more meaningful fight in the welterweight division, not Khan versus Vargas. However, after reading this whole article, you know, I didn't take what maybe some boxing fans would from something like this some people ooh, amir khan versus manny pacquiao ooh, kell brook versus manny pacquiao ooh, khan versus kell brook finally i didn't take that you know i think khan versus kell brook still solid big big domestically um uh, should have happened years ago didn't you know so people would still watch it kind of like brandon rios versus victor ortiz a fight that there's a backstory bad blood should have happened years ago People would still watch it, but not as big as it once could have been had they fought when it was at its peak. You know, losses later, you know, both at this point, Amir Khan and Kell Brook both have stoppage losses. Before, it was just Amir Khan early in his career had the stoppage loss to Bredis Prescott and then to Danny Garcia and then to Canelo. But 
you know, at a point in time, Kell Brook was undefeated, so he didn't have a stoppage loss, but he, in his last three fights, has been stopped and lost two of the three fights, again, to Gennady Golovkin at 160, and then right after that, he defended against a mandatory Errol Spence at welterweight. Now, speaking of Errol Spence, again, I didn't take what, I didn't just, like, rejoice, because new media, we get to the bottom of it, and... I don't know if people understand the power of social media, the power of the internet, but new media, we don't forget what was said. And my biggest takeaway from this is what I said at the beginning. Kell Brook's excuse for losing to Errol Spence Jr. is now rejected and is now void, you know, because before the fight, he said that Errol Spence was the new Jeff Lacey 2.0. He says, basically, nobody's really known Al Spence and I want me to fight with Pacquiao. He said all these things. Then he stepped in the ring with Errol Spence, gave it a good run, you know, did good early, was winning early rounds. Then the battle of attrition was won by Errol Spence, who later made him take a knee like Colin Kaepernick. Shout out to Colin Kaepernick on the Nike deal also and the endorsement. And Kilbrook was eventually stopped late in that fight back-to-back -back stoppages Gennady Golovkin then Errol Spence now again new media the thing that I don't fancy is that Kell Brook used an excuse as to why he lost he said basically I wasn't at mid true weight and I basically had no business fighting at 47 I should have moved to 54 and I told you guys all along go check my track record that Kell Brook coming off of back-to-back -back losses eye injuries I didn't really see how he fit into 154. You look at the guys at 154, a lot of them dudes is big, you know, Jermel Charlo, right? Guys like Swift Jared Hurd, who knocked down Edislandi Lada, another fight I covered as media, knocked him down in the 12th round, you know, in dramatic fashion. These guys are big and both undefeated. And Kell Brook was, you know, said he was going to fight at 54. He had one fight with Rabchenka. And then he beat him, stopped him. Jermail Charlo and Jared Swift heard they all obliged Kelbrook. They said, all right, he's in the division. He's a name. We'll fight him. They both openly said that. And then now Kel Brook's trying to go back down to welterweight. The same division where he made an excuse for losing to Errol Spence. He said, I couldn't beat Errol Spence. I had to drain myself and I wasn't at my true weight and things like that. So how is it all of a sudden with a long camp and all this and that? You're able to fight against Manny Pacquiao or Amir Khan at welterweight. See, this is the thing that, like I said, with new media, it's, it's going to be hard to get away with certain things. Like the thing is, he should have just owned the loss to Errol Spence, said, hey, I gave it a go. I was in Sheffield. I was in my backyard. He came and beat me. But when you throw out that excuse, it's kind of like kind of what Kovalev did in the Andre Ward loss in the first fight. He said, OK, son of judges that's why Andre Ward beat me but then you get stopped in the rematch right so then what's the excuse then you blame it on the referee Tony Weeks okay fine whatever then you have two tuna fights Kovalev fights against a leader Alvarez then he gets stopped again and dropped three times so you've already used up all of you know the get out of jail free cards you've already used up the different reasons why you lost and to me it doesn't make sense it sounds like you're looking for the big fight and the payday and stuff but 54 you said you had to move up to 54 because 47 was just too exhausting and it was too um damaging to your body and that's why you cite that you lost to errol spence after you said he was jeff lacy 2.0 and these other things like he's not ready and i don't see why the americans are over hyping errol spence you know it doesn't really add up and to make matters worse i remember there was a dialogue between kell brook and Errol Spence via social media, Twitter fingers, and Kell Brook called out Errol Spence for a rematch, right? And he says, fight me at 154. I was drained. I wasn't at my true weight, basically. Fight me at 54. Errol Spence responded and obliged and said, all right, I'll fight you at 154 if you get a title there. You know, make it worth my while. I already beat you. You know, I've already came to your backyard. I came to the UK and I already beat you. So, if you get a title in that division, I'll come up to 54 and fight you. No problem, man down. So, you know, if you're not fighting a rematch with Errol Spence at 50, at 47, then 
I don't really want to see it. Like, you know what I mean? I don't really care. I'm not like dying to see it because you said Errol Spence had to come up to 54 to fight you, you know, because it wasn't at your true weight. So why would I believe that you're going to be at your best and your freshest against Amir Khan, against Manny Pacquiao? See, this is this is what happens in boxing. The fighters, promoters, trainers, they sometimes spill the beans too much and they say too much. But you made your bed. You got to lie in it. You said you couldn't make welterweight comfortably. Now, all of a sudden, for big fights with Amir Khan, I understand you've been pursuing that. You know, Amir Khan already said, he said, I'm not coming to 54. I tried my hand at that, fighting at Canelo way to 155, got knocked out with one single punch. That's not my division. You know, I see my division at welterweight. So, you know, he's not budging. And arguably, he's the A-side. I don't know who's the A-side at this point, but maybe Amir Khan, right? And then now, you know, he's not budging. So, you know, you have to come. You know, Manny Pacquiao, he tried his hands in the 50s against Margarito. And that was when he was like super fast and, you know, just the whirlwind Pacquiao. Even though he's coming off a Lucas Matisse win, that, that wasn't a guy who had really done anything at welterweight. So, you know, he's not going to 54 to fight you. So now to get these super fights, all of a sudden with a long camp, you can make welterweight. But it's been over a year since the Spence fight. And, you know, you haven't been active. You just fought Rabchenko. And then now all of a sudden, with the long camp, you can comfortably make the, the weight. You know, this is not what he said. And like I said, new media, this stuff doesn't go away. Like they said in the movie Superbad. People don't forget. You know, Eddie Hearn saying he will make 147. I still think he's better at 154. But if he's got 16 weeks to do it, he'll be okay. And once again, people wonder why Eddie Hearn's statements and you know, matchroom fighters and stuff, why it's under so much scrutiny and, you know, why people hold the uh, zone under a microscope because these statements aren't consistent. Joshua Wilder, the negotiation stuff, it hasn't been consistent. There's loopholes in it. Kelbrook's statements about welterweight. He's basically made an excuse or a reason and said, I can't make 47. That's why I lost to Spence. It's not my real weight coming down from crashing down from the Golovkin 160 you know eating better and my body filled out it was just too challenging you know and now all of a sudden when you're not fighting Errol Spence to make a super fight with Pacquiao or Amir Khan suddenly you can make the weight again and also suddenly when Jamel Charlo and Swift Jared Hurd said we'll fight you at 54 no problem you have a good name you know we'll fight you you know, there's real life lions, lions only, Swift Jared Heard, big guys up at 54. And now all of a sudden you want to come back to 47. So to me, I like Kell Brook. He's a, he's a good fighter, but it's inconsistent with what he said. I thought he couldn't make it. Now a year plus has passed. You've only fought Rabchenko at 54. And instead of fighting the guys you said at the division that makes you most comfortable, like Jermail Charlo, Edis Lani Lada, who's coming off of a loss, uh, Swift Jared Hurd, Jaime Munguia, you know, all these big, massive guys or skillful guys or, you know, whatever, at 54, now you want to fight Amir Khan, who, you know, is really one fight removed. It'll be two if he wins this weekend, but two fights removed from a brutal knockout. Manny Pacquiao, who, you know, is one fight removed from the Jeff Horn loss. It's so it's just not making sense. And I don't think this, if this is a DAZN fight, I don't think it's really off to a good start with DAZN. Eddie Hearn said DAZN's gonna be the biggest thing, you know, the biggest force in boxing. But again, to sell things to Americans, people want honesty, transparency, and consistency. And I don't think Kell Brook in this equation has been consistent. Amir Khan, he, he's been pretty consistent. He said he's not going back to 54. You know, but Kell Brook hasn't. Kell Brook says, I couldn't fight Errol Spence. I wasn't at my best because of the weight. But now all of a sudden he can make weight with the long camp. So what's the difference? Why was there an excuse losing to Spence? You guys break it down. Let me know what you think. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.